and this is Logan out for another walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at a place called Doggensfield in Hampshire. It's uh, not far from uh, Hook and not that far actually from Junction 5 of the M3. And today we're going to be doing roughly a three and a half mile circular route taking a very peaceful walk alongside a section of the Basingstoke Canal. Along the way we'll be coming across a World War II pillbox, a lovely lake and a few surprises along the way. So do join us. <laughs> and Logan's already seen a duck on the canal. Well I've parked my car near the Barley Mow Bridge. There's a free car park just here that opposite the Barley Mo pub which you can just about see in the distance there and uh, well we're going to start off right by the canal and what a beautiful view look at this so there's the Barley Mo bridge in the, uh, the background there and then just panning around this beautiful willow tree and uh, <laughs> A couple of barges moored up by the, by the side. Okay, so here's a nice map of the area. So we are here and there's fleet and here's a bit of a blow up. So we're here. So we're going to follow the side of the canal down here, cross the bridge here, go across a uh, state Look at this beautiful, that's the Tundry Pond there. And then cross again and then follow back. It doesn't look very far on here, but it's, it's, so it's about three and a half miles. It's a small map. <laughs> well, a fair chunk of our walk today will be walking alongside the Basingstoke Canal. So let me tell you a little bit about its history. It was completed in 1794. It runs for about 31 miles from Basingstoke in the west to Byfleet in the east and from there it joins the Way navigation and then you can make your way all the way up to, to London. But like so many canals in the south of England it was never really a, a financial success and when the railways came along in the 1880s that really did uh, start the, the decline. Um, there was a little bit of a revival in the early 20th century but uh, it soon became derelict. But in the mid 1960s a group of enthusiasts came along, they started a society and started to, uh, to rebuild it as it were and by the 1990s pretty much all of it was uh, back to its previous um, setup. I think they lost the first five miles or so towards Basingstoke. Today it's owned by the Hampshire and Surrey County Councils and run by the Basingstoke Canal Authority. Wow, it is so peaceful along here. Oh, look at those steps over there. I wonder if that's been built for some ducks. <laughs> Possibly. And then, this is quite exquisite as we wander along here. Oh, mentioning ducks, there they are, making an appearance. Oh, look at that seat and little summer house over there. What a lovely place to have your gin and tonic in the, uh, in the evening. Because I'm filming at well, the end of July, it's a glorious summer's morning. It's already 20 degrees, I think they're talking about it hitting 26, 28 later on. Of course you've got this beautiful reflection of the trees in the water with uh, the sun as it is today.
so peaceful. Quite a bit of a rhododendron there on the far side. And just beyond there, quite a few pine trees. I think there's a plantation called the Arch Plantation there. But uh, again, there's gorgeous reflections, the trees and the water and the sunlight coming through. There's clearly some fish in there because I can see a little bit of a uh, little bit of evidence there. And they've made a really good job of refurbishing this uh, canal. The towpath is in is in excellent condition. Yep, it's that time of year. There's one there. Hey, <laughs> want that one there? You can normally you try and pick them off yourself. What about that one? Hey, hey, you nearly got it. What's that one? You got it? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, we can't sit and we can't sit and eat blackberries all day. Well, this is a quite delightful walk, it really is. And as well as the canal and the trees, there's quite a vast array of wildflowers. I've already seen loads of butterflies and dragonflies and damselflies. I just noticed along here. I'll see if I can show you on the far bank. There are these metal cylinders poking out. So in fact there's some on this side as well and I'm guessing that's just to uh, stop um, any slippage from the bank or erosion. I can't, uh, I say I'm not an expert on canals but I'm guessing that's what it is. Oh. Uh, there's a couple of times along this walk I've already wanted to just sit down and just gaze. <laughs> I'll just stop for a little second. There's the canal over there. I'm just going to pan around to show you a view on this side. Now, the sun is quite low, but uh, the house in the distance there, that's the uh, Dower House. I think it's relatively, um, yeah, well, 1920s, I think, um, part of the uh, estate. I'll, I'll explain more about the estate later on and then over. Uh, the far distance there, that's the Church of All Saints of the village. We're still heading south alongside the canal and I've come across this terrific pillbox and I knew it was here. I'm looking forward to having a look at it in more detail. There are quite a few uh, Second World War defences along the canal uh, and that's because it was part of the uh, GHQ stop line. There was always a, a worry that if the Germans had invaded they might have used the canal for transporting weapons and supplies and so a number of pillboxes were built and some other defences we'll have a look at. They would have never have stopped the invasion but they certainly would have slowed them up. So let me show you, the, try not to disturb this gentleman who's uh, fishing away <laughs> uh, alongside. I did have a chat with him, he said it was all right to film. Um, so here it is and it is slightly unusual in that it's it's built into the side of the, the bank so it looks as though it's on two levels so it's sort of crossed between a type 22 and a, a type 24. Let's have a look down here and look it's still got these hooks these are camouflage hooks they would have attached camouflage netting but uh, and there's the entrance down there. Should we go and have a look? Come on. Okay folks we're going in. I'm not sure quite what I'm going to see in here. Oh, ah, some stairs. Well, that makes sense. So it is on two levels. Oh, you stay there, Logan. Good boy. And ah, here we go. And there's gun hole number one. And 
looks like there's a little hole for something there, an attachment perhaps. And what else have we got around here? And then hole number two, and you would have had a perfect view of the canal. But yeah. And in surprisingly good condition as well. And back down we go. Ooh. And hopefully we'll still be up with it here. Ah. And we're out. Well that was fun. <laughs> well just before we kick on to show you these beautiful lilies that are here and uh, a few flowers begin to come out so it's still quite early in the morning so i wouldn't be surprised if a couple of hours time those will be out in full full bloom quite exquisite okay well this is blacksmith's bridge and this is as far south as we're going to go along the canal so we're going to head up this little path here and actually cross over the canal. Now as we do so, look at these little sort of concrete squares in the ground with circles in them. There's about one, two, three, four, five, about eight or nine of them. And these again, these are part of the Second World War defence system for want of a better word they have here. And these are actually mine sockets. They're not hollow but they would have ever a solid circular centre that's about four inches deep and they would have put, uh, they called them biscuit shaped spider mines. They had a wooden plug in them when they weren't in use but the idea is when a, a German tank came over here it would set them all off and that would be sufficient to uh, to blow it up basically. <laughs> okay now from here we should get a good view of the now and this looks like this is a little turning area around there oh, it really is I keep saying it's beautiful but it, it is <laughs> and then let's have a look over on this side and there's some horses with their fly masks and fly sheets on to uh, protect them right so we're now going to head over uh, to a place called uh, Dogginsfield Park and we will be joining the canal later on. Well just on the other side of Blacksmith's Bridge I just noticed these huge concrete cylinders and again this is part of the um, that Second World War defence stop line um, to prevent tanks. And if you look very closely, if it's showing up, that you can see there's a, a pipe there and they would have threaded um, heavy duty steel rope through those and attached one up with the other to make it more of a more of an obstacle. But incredible to think these have been here for 80 years. There's quite a few of them. Must be about 10 of them dotted along this side of the bank certainly would have made quite a uh, difficult thing to to get a tank through that's for sure. Well now into the uh, Doggamsfield estate about 500 acres in total we can't quite see the main house at the moment we'll see that shortly but I've had to put Logan on a lead just for this little section uh, because a little bit of wildlife around but that's where we're heading the uh, wonderful lake. Well just behind me in the far distance is uh, Dogmansfield House and uh, quite an impressive building. The present building there was built in 1728 on the site of a one-time bishop's palace but uh, going back to the 15th century Henry VI often stayed there and uh, it was there that plans were made for the short-lived marriage of Henry VII's son Arthur to Catherine of Aragon 
And of course, when Arthur died, Catherine became the first wife of Arthur's brother, Henry VIII. <laughs> of course, Henry went on to have quite a few wives over the years, but at least Catherine survived. But the house is now a, a five-star luxury hotel. And if I pan round, these gorgeous views. This is uh, looking to the to the west. And there in front of me now is the Tundry Pond. Although to call it a pond is doing it a bit of a disservice. It looks more like a lake to me. And local legend has it that uh, uh, Dogginsfield Village was originally here until the owners of the main house wanted an uninterrupted view of the of the lake from the house. So um, the village was moved brick by brick at the turn of the 18th century over to where it is now to the east of here. Indeed, the reason why the canal makes this wide curve or loop around the estate was to protect the privacy of the owner of the house, um, Sir Henry Mardmay at the time it was built. Uh, the sun is out now and uh, there's hardly a, a cloud in the sky really is quite beautiful and a nice little cooling breeze as well now i'm just on the westernmost end of the uh the pond or lake and uh looks like there's a couple of bridges there's an island in the middle and i i'm guessing that that must have been the original um driveway into the house because there is a road that uh goes behind those trees and all the way up to the the house in the, the distance. Certainly quite impressive. Well I made my way across the estate and we're just about to join the canal again and I spotted another pillbox. <laughs> I turn around. Now this one is actually on private land so I'm not going to get much nearer than this. I'll see if I can take a couple of photographs using a, a zoom. Interesting though that this one's a good hundred 200 yards away from the actual canal but I, I wonder if it's also there to protect the estate side which is quite open land might have been an ideal landing ground for German gliders and here we are now back at the canal this is uh, Spratt's Hatch Bridge named after a farm that's uh, next door to it built in 1792 Isn't that lovely so that's looking south and then looking north and we're going to follow this towpath along the left hand side there and it says someone doing some good handy work cutting back all the uh, overgrowth there what a lovely way to travel Definitely. <laughs> are you going far Minutes. Oh goodness! <laughs> oh, so uh, yes, that's so, where I'm heading. <laughs> oh, Enjoy the rest of your day. And you. Oh. Now that so, does look like fun. Oh, just coming across another bridge. This is uh, Baisley Bridge. I think we'll have to go underneath this one. Yes, indeed. Lovely again with the, I keep going on about these beautiful reflections. But um, we're actually, uh, this little section of the, of the path here is part of the Three Castles Way, which is a, a 60 mile long distance path from Windsor to Winchester via Odium and it's uh, supposed to represent a, a 13th century journey made by King John but we've been on this path before I think on our where did we come across it? I think the New Olsford uh, walk we touched upon it Another bridge, 
Stacy's Bridge, again built in 1792 and looks like it was rebuilt in 1975. Now we're just going to do a little detour. Um, I want to see if I can find a boundary stone. So we need to go up some steps and over the bridge. Oh, up we go. Pull your old dad up, Logan. There we go. And left round here. Yeah, here we go. Aha, and there it is. A boundary stone. It's actually in some private land. So this is about as near as I'm going to get to it. But it's about ooh, 50 yards from Stacy's Bridge. And uh, it's actually a sarsen stone, which is a type of sandstone that's, well, 40 million years old. I think this was originally situated as a marker along the, the drive uh, for Doggensfield Park, but then they moved it to the main boundary between uh, Doggensfield and Winchfield. But uh, there, is, there is some engraving on it, but I can't see from, from here. Is it if I film you? You've got to start paddling now. Oh, okay. <laughs> we got far to go. I'm going to do about 12 k Oh, well done. At least you've got the weather for it. <laughs> now, I see she's had a she had a Union Jack on her boat and uh, uh, a Ukraine t-shirt, so she may well have been an international. <laughs> oh, and I made her stop. Wow, look at that. Wonderful thatched cottage on the other side of the bank. For a moment, I thought that was a real horse in the garden, but it's actually a sculpture. I love the little flower pot man as well. Just propping himself up on the side uh, of the pontoon there. Oh. But we must kick on. We're nearly at the end of our walk now. Just one more bridge to go. Oh, look at those. Aren't they beautiful? <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them in formation as well. Oh, so sweet. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Give us away then. <laughs> I'm very envious. <laughs> now I think that was the barge that um, we saw right at the beginning that was uh, at the Barley Mow Bridge. Well folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a thumbs up or like and do make a comment. And uh, please do subscribe if you haven't already done so. Then uh, that way hopefully you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. We've had a beautiful walk today. The weather's been glorious and such a, a pretty and peaceful meander alongside the canal. We're off to the Barley Mo pub now for some light refreshment. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio.